I bring to you greetings from Nigeria. I bring you greetings from Holiness Camp, Kwali Abuja. I bring you greetings from the pain room in Pastor's house, Holiness Choir, in the Holiness Campground, Abuja. All these greetings are to you richly in Jesus' name. It's a beautiful time to meet with you and strengthen your faith in Christ and in the journey for heaven. Want to go before the Lord now and pray unto Him. Go before the Lord and talk to Him. Go before the Lord and bless Him for the opportunity we have. Jesus name we pray Almighty Father we worship and bless your name for this period we give thanks to you for the privilege of giving to us to share with your children a divine father we are asking you will visit your children tonight and bless their lives in Jesus name a God we are asking you will make them joyful you will make them happy you will enliven them strengthen them Recover them, Amen. renew them, Amen. revitalize them, Amen. restore them, Amen. reanoint them Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, we worship. Thank you, divine. Open their eyes that they might see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, teach us your word. Lord, teach us your word. We want to know your word. Lord, teach us your word. God, teach us your word. We want to know your word. Father, teach us. We want to know your word. My God. We want to practice it. We want to be doers. My God. Open your mouth and sing. We want to know your word. It is that true, my God. 
Hallelujah. My God, teacher. Oh Lord. Amen. Now I'm discussing with you on. What we do not do in holiness ministry. What we do not do in holiness ministry. In the book of First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 8. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Here, the Bible speaks of the simplicity of the true minister of the gospel. Simplicity in character, simplicity in manners, in approaches, in relationship, in that which he does, the work of God. Paul did not shake the tree. Paul did not stir up dust when he came in among the people. He did not make a show of himself. In fact, he did not show that he had much eloquence. No, he did not manifest the flesh. He, de he did not demonstrate what other people of the world demonstrate. Maybe some are preachers. What they demonstrate. How much they raise themselves. Testify. Praise themselves. That was not the approach he had. He said, I was among you as one that knew nothing. I didn't show my knowledge of academics. I didn't show my qualification of being a professor in law. I just came to show Jesus. I just came to preach Jesus. That is actually the attitude I possess myself, a little Paul here. 
generally all over the world, be it in this country, Nigeria, or where there is no show up of myself. There is no demonstration of power in the sense of a great man. I'm not aware of that. I'm not even conscious of that. I am not. If there are going to be a meeting of great people, I will not be there. Because I won't see myself as one of them. Not to know anything but Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Yes. My preaching, therefore, was not noise-making. My preaching was not with enticing of man's wisdom, with high-sounding words to show how much of them I have, how much of intelligence, how much of grammar, how much of uh, this and that. No! They don't carry such words, high-sounding words. Yes. They are not to make you applaud the man. Clap for the man. His preach, his words are great. No. They are simple words that the children may not need to open the dictionary to know what I am saying. Yes. But Paul said the words I speak are the way the words of God inspired of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit passes through these words to break through the hearts of man, the hearts of men, to enlighten the hearts of men, the minds of men, the minds of the hearers, to communicate spiritual understanding to those that hear. Yes, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That your attention should not be diverted from Jesus to man, to the quality of the man, to the learnings of the man, to the attainment of the man. No, but to Jesus, the Savior, Jesus, the Lord, Jesus, the door to heaven. So that's how we live. <laughs> that's how we live. And that is how God is. It is the simplicity of God that made Satan dare to challenge him. Very simple. If you come to know God, yet, if you go to heaven and see God relate among men and angels, you will say, no wonder Satan had chance to make noise because he's not carrying air along with him. He's not shaking rocks and mountains to cause people to know that this is the great creator. The, not that he cannot do this, but no. Among his people, among his creatures, he would want to rather give them simplicity of fellowship. Yes. When Elijah was asked by God to go to the mountain and by, stand by the cliff, he was there was first a mighty wind breaking trees. He said God was not there. Then there was a mighty shaking earthquake. God was not there. Then there was a burning fire burning with all power. God was not there. But then there was a still small voice. And God was there. The gentleness of God. When God
God came to the earth in the person of Jesus. If you had another opportunity to meet with Jesus and live with him, you say, no wonder. Uh -uh. Peter could take him aside and rebuke him. <laughs> hey! Okay. That is why somebody could, could smite him on the cheek. Because that air of greatness, mightiness, great one, is not carrying it. If he carries it, who will stand? If he carries that greatness, who will abide? In fact, the creation itself will melt away. He puts on humility. I am humble and lowly in heart. I am humble and lowly in heart. So, that is the manner we demonstrate. Oh, pastor is coming to Europe. Pastor is coming to Europe. When pastor comes, he will wonder, is it the one? In fact, those who have not seen Pastor Rika before, will say, eh? has he come? You will be the one to say, is the one that is sitting in that side. You mean that is the, one, the man that you are making noise about? Yes, that is the man. We are not making noise. We are not shaking trees. That's why some people can speak against me and not bother. Some people can even ignore me, can despise me. Since I'm not shaking trees, they can speak as though they are all in all. They fear nobody. It's because they really demand is nobody. Paul said, I am nothing. So, this is it. However, he said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. When we speak, our words seem to carry great virtues, great wisdom. Our words are revelations. Hmm. I remember so many years ago, I visited a retired colonel who was an intelligent man. And we were discussing. This man was so fascinated that he said, Pastor, I wish anytime you come here, I should record your words. Because they, I see wisdom. I see inspiration. I see intelligence. I see unequaled weights dropping from your lips every time. That is true. That is like that. I don't have casual message. I don't have it. Permit me to reveal a secret to you. It will help some of you. <laughs> I completely forgot that I had met him today. I completely forgot. I was even feeling sleepy. I wanted to go and sleep. When Bright called me and said, yes, yeah, just to greet me and to let me know that he was going to get ready for the meeting. I said, which meeting? I said, the Holy Ghost sent you to talk to me. So, I said, wonderful. I have met him with you, and they didn't remind me. I have not gotten my message ready. So I called the admin officer that was said, Ah, uh -uh. Brian said he has sent you the ID. He said, Which meeting? He too had forgotten. I said, Remember, I told you to tell you that next week we will have a revival with him. He said, Oh, I said, He had just told me. Oh, just 30 minutes ago, he laughed and said, you, even when they wake you up like this, your message is perfect. 
your weights are ordained already. There is a package ready for you to carry and go and deliver. That is true. Today, you will receive your package. Amen. The Lord has given me already. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. That is what the scripture is saying. He said, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So that when we speak, people just marvel. You mean a man speaks like this? You mean a man knows to this point? You mean God has given this kind of understanding to men? Sure. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. When we speak in our gentleness, the weights are great. The weights are mighty. Mighty true God. Yes. Moses, the meekest in the world among men. Moses, a God unto Pharaoh. Before Pharaoh, Pharaoh trembles. Before his breathing, he is the meekest of men in the world. So that's how God does it. He said, he said of himself, I am meek and lowly in heart. I am humble and lowly in heart. But that is the creator. So, in, that's the word. In 1 Thessalonians, Chapter 1, I read verse 8 to verse 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8 to verse 10. It goes, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God, to God's word, is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven. Whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivered us from the wrath to come. Yes, God directed our feet. Thank God that God brought the holiness movement. And thank God you accepted this movement. And you accepted it with all your heart with all your might. Your testimony is being heard. People are encouraged by you, by the works you are doing. It, and the people say, this is, see, the work you are doing in Europe is succeeding. What manner of entering in we have among you. I don't really know whether uh, among other general overseers, general superintendents, bishops, senior pastors, and all that have also entered. I don't know whether it is like this man sitting down here. How he entered in. How? Depositing this simplicity of Jesus. This meekness of Jesus. No show up. No show up. No bragging. No. No lifting up the head. No show of intelligence. No. In 
Ngiro. But as Jesus in the world, many still didn't know him. He was in the world. The world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came into his own. Can you even understand that? Jesus was in the world. The world was made by him. But the world knew him not. He came into his own. To among his people. So you can see. That. I'm not sure anybody is trembling for ah this international director and this is oh you look at him now this he has come now uh, what will happen to me now I don't I'm not I'm not sure anybody is trembling there except the Lord is the one that may put it there for his good put it there for his glory otherwise I can be there among you and others who do not know me may not know I am the one. Hmm. Jesus was among his twelve disciples. Well, he was number twelve since the number twelve had gone to bring a group of enemies. And the group of enemies came for Jesus. They didn't know who among the twelve people they were saying was Jesus. I'm talking to you. The simplicity of, of Christ. The simplicity of Jesus. The simplicity of the holiness man. Judas brought the, the people to arrest him. The people came and saw him among 11 others. They didn't see the difference. They didn't know until Judas had to discuss to disclose him, to reveal him by a kiss. Whichever man I kiss, that is the one. But you cannot see it by sight. I'm praying that this type of spirit will take you over. This type of gentleness in Christ, this kind of humility in Christ should overwhelm you. Should suck you. Look at it in the book of Second Corinthians, chapter eleven. Second Corinthians, chapter eleven, from verse one. From verse one, it goes to verse five. Would to God ye could bear with me a little. In my folly. And indeed. Bear with me. For I am jealous over you. With godly jealousy. For I have espoused you. To one husband. That I may present you. As a chaste virgin. To Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm afraid that as the serpent tempted the first human creatures, Adam and Eve, that this serpent also has come among you to beguile you, to persuade you, and move you from this simplicity that is in Christ. This simplicity of holiness, of the holy man, that you now want to be known. You want to shake environment. You want to steer dust. 
I am afraid that you might be losing God because when you want to be known, you will be missing God. When you want to shape the environment so people can be conscious of yourself, you will be losing God. You will be losing Him. So that is it, brother. That is it, my sister. Paul said, I fear. For if he that cometh Preached another Jesus, whom we have not preached. Of ye or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Maybe this man is too meek and lowly. If you count it for witness, this international director, and therefore your eyes are turning away from him. Your eyes are refusing, your heart is refusing him as a leader. Your mind is questioning his preaching. Maybe that is it now. Or else you begin to question his administration. You begin to account him as a fool who doesn't know what he is doing. That's why Paul said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that the devil might turn you away from this simplicity. The spirit we gave you, Satan might turn you away from this spirit. The gospel we preached, the gospel of holiness, the devil might be turning you away from this gospel. You need noise. You need something higher. You are wishing for the garlics and the onions of Egypt. You are looking for the cucumbers, the melons of Egypt. You see them better than the manners from heaven. I'm, I'm afraid. You see them better. How did it happen, my brethren, in heaven? How did the angels turn away their hearts from the living God to Satan, to Lucifer? Is it not because of the simplicity of God? Is it not because of this gentleness of God? They started questioning God. They started judging God. And they began to see another man, another being, Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning. They started seeing him Higher than God, better than God, more knowledgeable, sweeter in communication and love, to the point they sided him. They went for him to their collapse, to their fall and everlasting doom. So Paul is saying in verse 5, For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles. Hmm. Well, by the revelations of God, by the communications of God, by the works God has allowed me to do, by the commendations of God, I don't think any church, any denomination, 
any ministry may rejoice over their leader above holiness of other movement. Paul has to say this because of the works of Satan. I am not behind the chiefest of the apostles, though I am gentle, though I appear weak, though I do not make noise, I don't share trees, I am not behind. If anyone minister can produce people for heaven, I can produce less. I can produce less people to hand over to the living God. So, I say, what we do not do in holiness ministry, take note of it. Yes. Take note of it. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, chapter 4, laid a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. We are ministers of Christ. We possess with us the mysteries of God. The truth of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy. Hmm. Ah. I was on my bed today praising God and thanking Him. I was jubilating in His presence. I said, God, see what you have done for me. I see Christianity lost. I see people. I see churches behaving like pupils and students in Nigerian schools, government schools in Nigeria. They are always in strife. They are always not paying their teachers. And so there is no commitment to the duty. There's no commitment. The children are learning very poorly. The universities are graduating half baked people. So is the church in our generation. If it is so in Nigeria, it is much more so in all parts of the world. Because the light of the gospel shine, shines better, brighter in Nigeria. Now, I say, in this condition, you granted me the grace to have the knowledge of your word the knowledge of your true world. Huh. You granted me the grace, the privilege to teach this world to the world. Hey. I looked into the printing press some Books were going on there in print. Oh, they are going on there now. They are printing them. These books are unique. 
they are special they are revelational they are unequaled and they are coming up to open the eyes of people in the world i said this is great O oh lord this is you and this had been my cry for many years right from the 80s when i look around and saw that the church of god was dying worldwide the missionaries that came to many of these churches didn't come with the correct gospel they didn't come with the true gospel they came with only percentages of this gospel hence the churches don't know the complete work the complete message and they grab you with all their strength not enough to take them to heaven father oh that you spread this movement to the ends of the earth you spread these books these messages to the ends of the earth because i am sure he that read them will have will have open eyes will have enlightened eyes will have the eye of this the inner eye opened to understand the mysteries of god if he's looking for it yes so you see what we have you see how we jubilate in the presence of god Ah, uh-uh. but another mystery is many do not understand. Many. I was speaking to somebody today of a region coordinator that the Lord revealed that he had backslidden. The Lord said. You can't improve him in the job. You are thinking you will improve him in the job. He cannot work like that. He has gone very far. And this person has worked with me for above 10 years. Then we had to replace him because of complaints here and there. And finally the voice of God, the revelations of God. Now he has left the ministry. With all love, I even sent him some money to make him know that we appreciate what you did. And we're still working for you. Refresh yourself in Christ. Recover. They still work for you. He showed love for him. But he has left the movement today. And has gone to join one church. Ah uh-uh. ah. What about these things you were talking about the movement? Were you? Why were you speaking? Were you just a drunken man that was speaking of sins? But this church you have gone to join. Why is it not the church you were all telling me at this all this time? Oh, the people are backsliding, no light again, or do this like this. Is it not you who told me that? How how could it be that you have gone, you have left this place, that you yourself announced to the world, you went down, you planted units and chapters? I said, what's happening to human beings? Hey, I notice I have another category of people that your preaching is taken in the superficial level. The heart has not understood. I say, hey, this and God suffers with man. This is how God suffers. We think that the man is original. We think that the man has understood. We think, but the man has not understood. Hey. If you have run with footmen 
and they weary you. How will you contend with horsemen? If you have lived in a church where righteousness is practiced, even if they are hypocrites, they are fewer. If you have lived in a church where God commends and you leave such a movement as I'm going, you are going to where God has never said anything about. You are going to where righteousness is not there. The hypocrites are so much. Are you going to contend there for heaven? Will you now go there? Where you are even going to be their preacher, their teacher? Are you now going to make heaven there? Ma, what happened to you? Why are you not? Why didn't you pray that? A deeper sense of this truth be formed in you. Why didn't you requ request that the full light of these doctrines be given to you? Yes, what about our scripture? Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we we have we have this ministry as we have received mercy, mercy because. How did I come across this thing? How? How did I come across the true God? How did I come to know his ways, his doctrines, that even from heaven, the Lord will be directing people, go to Pastor Paul Rica. Ah! How did I come at this treasure? Mercy! did I come? The things are great, my dear. It's mercy. Then what we do not do in holiness ministry. Number one, we faint not. We faint not. We do not withdraw. We do not resign. We do not retire. We don't. We are custodians of this truth. As Peter, we have the key of eternal life to open the door of it for others. If we resign, who will do this for others? If we withdraw, who will help the others? If we resign, how will the others be saved? If we resign, the Holy Spirit will resign. Then what about our lives? If we withdraw, the Holy Spirit will withdraw. Then what about our eternity? If we retire, the Holy Spirit will retire from you. Then how do we continue in this life? That's why we don't retire. We don't faint. We don't give up. We will continue to the end. Sick or strong. Accused or pressed. Oppressed or blessed. Rejected or accepted. Criticized or commended. Disciplined or promoted. We don't resign. We don't faint. I, one of the reasons why I plead with God that I should not backslide, then what will happen to this gospel? What about those who have believed? If I backslide now, 
How will they take it? Will they will they have strength to believe another thing? Will they not throw these things away? Will there be courage in another man to strive after holiness? Will they not discourage people? Will they have hope that any man again will speak of these things and be sincere? I said, God, I don't want to disappoint you. I don't want to disappoint myself. I don't want to disappoint the men in the world. Grant me your grace. I will continue steadfastly to the end of my life. That is it. We faint not. And you want to faint? Have you really come to holiness movement? Have you really come to holiness ministry? Hey, remember our message, the danger of losing a great ministry. Beware of losing a great ministry. Beware of losing a great minister. Beware of losing a great privilege. Remember that message. Go and listen to it again. Yes. Beware of losing a great ministry. Go and listen to it many times. And keep yourself as a leader, as a worker, as someone that has been known in this movement for long, someone that has demonstrated zeal, even if you came yesterday, others have seen you, others have heard you. The noise of your restitution has been heard to the shock of many. What will you now say? So we faint not. Verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We do not practice dishonesty in a hidden manner. We do not practice dishonesty in a secret way. Analia, how much? Did you sell the land for so much? Yeah, for so much. Ah, you are dishonest. That is not the, money, the total money of that land you sold. See the Holy Ghost. Where has Satan so filled you that you should tempt the Holy Ghost? Why are you going into dishonesty in your reporting, in your testimonies? Why? No. We do not practice dishonesty in ministry. We do not hide the real fact somewhere and present ourselves in another way. With all this message of one man, one wife, with all this message, you are actually married somewhere. Sometimes when you were young, you left to a new to a new husband. And you were playing up and down as if nothing happened. You are practicing dishonesty. You are not true. Because, your test, because the real fact in you is not all known. You have hidden a fact. I say what we do not do in holiness ministry. We do not practice 
dishonesty in in a hidden manner. We renounce it. We reject it. We bring it up to life and to light. We don't practice hypocrisy. We don't. Be very careful because satanic suggestions make you to be like Ananias. Because Satan will say, no, 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 don't, confess, don't speak about this one. Keep this one aside. Nobody knows. But you have gone into dishonesty. Hidden. Nobody really knows. really knows. Does not God know? Does it not form part of the revelations he gives? Of you. At his books, keeping wrong records. So, that is what the scripture says. We don't do that. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We renounce them. We reject them. We bring out our faults to, so others can see. So God can see. We confess them. He that hideth his sins shall not prosper. But he that confesses and forsaketh shall have mercy. We brought ourselves to the level of mercy because we have confessed and forsaken. Again, not walking in craftiness. Not walking in craftiness. Mm. Crafty. Shirut wisdom. Shirut. Cunningness. Evil wisdom. Exploitative wisdom. Lying wisdom. Untrue wisdom. Dirty wisdom. Sinful wisdom. For gains. For self promotion. For self defense. For self advertisement. We don't do that. We don't do that. Craftiness. Not walking in craftiness. Showing that we are light when we are really not light. Showing that we are for person. We are for, yes, we are for leadership. We are not. We are not. We are only using mouth. I love you. I love you. It's not true. It's the love of Delilah for Samson. Craftiness. Know well how to play it with your mouth. Know well how to play it with your record. Know well, well how to arrange witnesses. But craftiness, we don't do that. What we do not do in holiness ministry, we don't do that. Yes. No, handling the word of God deceitfully. The reason why you are preaching <laughs> Your preaching holiness is because you want to come, you want to cause the people to believe in you and be relaxed enough for you to achieve your evil end. It's like arm robbers or a thief coming to somebody 
and preach wonderful message of Jesus to him. And then the man said, Hey, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Please, pray for me. I want God to forgive me. He said, the prayer I'm going to pray with you now, if you are ready for this prayer, okay, I will pray for you. It will last for 10 minutes, so don't open your eyes. For 10 minutes, don't open your eyes. If you open your eyes, God will not hear this prayer. And the man believed you because the words and scriptures you quoted, they are deep. They are original. How will he ever think that you mean to carry away a property that is before him and keep him closing his eyes by 10 minutes you have left the place? How will he think like that? Preaching the word of God deceitfully. Just to deceive people and make gain. Or deceive them and initiate them. Deceive them and initiate them. They believe, oh, my daddy in Christ, my mommy in Christ. Through the world, as they are coming to you, they are relaxed, but it's to take them to Satan. It's to initiate them to the devil. Preaching the word deceitfully. Deceitfully. Your aim of preaching is not really the salvation of that person, but your benefit. There's something you want to gain. There's something you want to benefit. That's where you're preaching. He said, we don't do that in holiness ministry. Paul the apostle said concerning the Corinthian Christians, he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 I read verse 14 to verse 17 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 14 to 17 Behold the third time I am ready to come to you and I will not be burdensome to you for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent? Did I make a gain of you? Did I? I'm not looking for that which belongs to you. Please, what we do not do in holiness ministry, we do not preach for money. I believe in all sincerity that nobody in Europe, not even in America, nor in Africa, nor in other continents in the world, nor in this country, Nigeria, will say, I lost it after his money. Nobody. Because that is not the duty, the works, and oppression of a holiness minister. 
I will counsel you. I will lead you. I will enrich you. I will pray for you. But do to your money as the Lord leads you. According to the principles of truth. And eternal life. But not that I shall seek after your money. Never. He said, I'm not looking for your property. I'm not saying, send me a car to do what with it. Does life consist in a car? Give me this, your property, to do what with it. Does life consist in that property? Yet, if the Lord moves you, let the Lord move you. It is love that gives. It is love that receives. That is it. But the father is the one that lays on for the children, not the children that lays or lays things in store for the father. So that is it. No craftiness. No craftiness. Yes. Paul said something here. He said, but, he said, but be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guy. He's still playing with the children. He said, I found, I caught you with a fault. I know I play wisdom. I caught you with a fault. Just play of way. Are you people rejoicing? You don't know what you're losing that have not come among you. You don't know what you're losing. I know Satan is battling. Do you want Satan to win? Is Satan winning for your promotion? For your heaven or hell? I caught you. But I'm playing with you with words. I've not let it to the heart. But I must rebuke you of it so that you don't, you learn it tomorrow. Because I ask, don't I need love too? Don't I need to be, to be shown that, oh, my pastor will love you? What's happening to you? What is the problem? But you are forgiven. Perfectly. The Lord should not lay it to your charge. Now, as I said, what we do not do in holiness ministry. Go back to Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Commending ourselves. All these accusations that people brought, brought and said them in the internet, said this and said that, I knew I had a perfect conscience and I allow every man go to God and find out whether your pastor is a sinner. Your pastor is a thief. Your pastor is immoral. Go and, everyone, go and meet with God and check out. Or go and do your investigations. Let every man be a liar and God be true. That the man God has given to you is a, is a Christian. He's righteous. He's holy. And maintain so daily. Every man's conscience in the sight of God. That's what I do. 
So, and he continues to say, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. What we do not do in holiness movement is to give you obscure preaching. Ways that are not clear. That you don't understand what we are saying. No, our ways are clear. If you don't understand them, you are not interested in them. If you don't understand them, it's because you yielded to Satan. And Satan put you away. When you come to hear me speak, your attention is not there. You are rather imagining, <laughs> you are imagining some things you have heard. One of the coordinators, not in the movement now, quite a long time ago, maybe about six years or so, or seven years ago, uh, he came up. I mean, he gave this, I was told, somebody gave this testimony, who sat by him during a, one of the conferences in the hall of meeting. I was preaching. And the word of God was going on, convicting people. He burst up to this, to one sitting by him, see him. He can preach very well, but he cannot forgive. Isn't he my coordinator? Still the coordinator at that time. See him now. <laughs> he can preach very well, but he cannot forgive. Who told you? You had stories and you believed them. Did you verify? Am I not your leader? Why didn't you come to me to check out? Why? Did you not come to me to check out? Now, he is no more in the movement. Since for how many years now? See how it has affected you. To remove you from eternal life completely. Because you believed a lie. You believe things that are not verified. An enemy has told you something. So secret. You cannot verify it. But you tend to believe that enemy. See how it is affecting you now. See how it's turning your heart away from the minister. God has sent to take you to heaven. Will you go there again? So this is what I want you to understand, my brethren. Our words are not obscure. Our preaching and teaching not obscure. Not thing hidden. Not in darkness. They are very clear. In Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. The Bible tells us of the world. He said, from verse 1, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? Verse 4, Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. All ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understand it and right to them that find knowledge. Receive instruction. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. Receive my instruction and not silver. My instruction and not silver. The words are plain. The words are clear. The doctrines are clear. 
Where ambiguity? Where are you sticking to baptism in the name of Jesus only? Where are you sticking to that? The explanations are very clear. Baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Where were those people who thought COVID-19 was a sign of the tribulation? Where is it now? It has vanished from the earth. Hey, tribulation will happen before the rapture. Tribulation will happen before the rapture. Where is it now? We taught you rapture before tribulation. I will make the scriptures clear. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. They are not looking for the truth. They are not looking for the way. It is he to them that the God of this world has blinded their minds because they went after the world. They go after Satan. So he blinded their minds. Otherwise, to those people that love the Lord, the, our weights are a great treasure. They are like heat treasure. Which, when a man finds it, he goes to buy to sell all he has to purchase them. Yes, yes. Back again to Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians. Chapter 4, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. That's what we don't do. We're not seeking for honor. Honor me. Yes, the Bible says you should honor me, but I should leave you to the Bible. And make that your choice. I should make sure I behave well so that you are not tempted by my foolish behavior to dishonor me. But as to whether you will honor me or not, it's your choice. The Bible has commanded so, but we don't preach ourselves. It's not we we are not promoting ourselves. We are preaching Jesus and him that was crucified because that's where salvation is. That is where salvation is. In the government, some high men in the government are given candidates, number of candidates to bring for employment. So that he can employ the person he wants. But in Christ, the ministers are not told to bring forth somebody he wants to be in heaven. So that God should write the name of that person in heaven. No. It's Jesus alone. So we preach him alone. That your faith should be on Jesus alone. Your faith. Because God says, even if Noah, Job, and Daniel were in that city, they will also only serve themselves and no other. No daughter, no son. So, why should I then preach myself? Can I serve anybody? Do I have any power on my own without Christ? To serve any, even the person hearing me in preaching? Do my weights work on their own without the Holy Spirit? Then why am I preaching myself? Why should I exalt myself? Why should I be drawing attention to myself? Why should I be seeking the promotion of myself? Do I really mean for these people to be saved? Don't you know that God is a jealous God? That if you promote yourself, He will withdraw. And your people will suffer. Those people who are looking to you and no more to God, they will suffer. They won't make it to heaven. 
They looked to Moses. Even when the God of Moses was on earth, the Jews looked to Moses. Honored Moses above Jesus. Where are they today? Where are they? That honored the creature above the creator. We preach not ourselves. But Christ Jesus the Lord. But Christ Jesus the Lord. And as for ourselves, we are your servants. For Jesus sake, we we'll serve you. We we'll wash your feet. We will stand up and allow you to sit down. For Jesus' sake. That is what we need to understand. That is what we need to know. Yes. Very important. Learn this. Know this. Know this. And again, see it. Verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our heart. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in 18 vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What do we not do? We do not take the glory of God. We do not. As ministers... Of the Lord Jesus over your life. We don't take the glory of the Lord. We give God his glory. We give God his glory. We only perform our duty. And at the end. We are yours unprofitable servant. As Jesus said. Except he makes us profitable. On our own. We are unprofitable. Except he gives us the next assignment. That will make us profitable to him. Profitable to humanity. Otherwise on our own we are unprofitable. So we don't preach ourselves. Now. Having learned this. To you leaders. What you have seen. And have. And none of me do. You will prosper in the Christian life. God will be with you. Look at it in the book of Philippians. Look at it in Philippians chapter 4. Verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heart and sin in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. This is a message to you leaders. Don't manufacture your own. The Lord has given you a leader to follow. A leader to emulate. Live like him. Be humble. Be loving. Be peaceful. Don't seek to be known. Don't seek to be honored. Don't direct the people's attention to yourself. Direct them to God. As you see in me, go and do. Those things which ye have both learned, I'm teaching you. Go and practice them. 
you have not overgrown them. We have not overgrown the scripture. The knowledge of the scripture. The wisdom of the scripture. If man on earth cannot learn and overgrown the knowledge of biology, the knowledge of insects, they're still learning from the same insects. He has got master's degree. From the same insect, he has got professor he has got professorship. And he's still reading more on the insects. Is it about God that we have known all? Is it the great word of God that we have known all? Let's keep on learning. Yes, we are we learn, we are in higher levels by our learning, but we're still learning. We're in different levels due to learning, but we're still learning. We're still learning. So, do it. And the God of peace shall be with you. You will live in peace among yourselves. Nobody is struggling for himself. Nobody is promoting himself. Nobody is bringing another person down for himself. There will be no clique among you. I don't have a click. I don't have people among you that are mine. No. These ones are not mine. These are mine. I set them up to be giving me a report. There's nobody there among you. Not one. Nobody will say, Yes, yes, Pastor, you appointed me. I've appointed nobody. You're all mine. Where therefore should there be a click? This are my own. This I will, they're not. I, I don't regard them. What should cause that? That's not the Christianity I preach among you. It's not the Christianity God gave to us. Yes. Go and do it. Let the leaders commit this pure ministry to others. The ministry that came to you, that came among you, is a pure ministry. Clean. Undefiled. Committed to others. Second Timothy. Chapter 2. I read verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. This pure ministry that we have taught you, come among you and taught you, brought you here and teach you, commit them to others. If the rapture delays, let the new generation know it. Let the children that are coming up know it. Pure, undefiled, correct and truthful. Commit thou to faithful men, not to unstable men. A man that is a sinner is not a faithful man. A man that is a liar is not a faithful man. A man that is soon angry is not a faithful man. A woman that is proud is not a faithful woman. No. And cannot be a good custodian of this truth. Look for true people and commit this truth to them. Again, do not get offended with holiness revival movement. And withdraw because of mine. What really happened to this to this set up, to these angels that got offended with the living God and now withdrew from the worship of God to set up and they fell a great fall. A great fall. So, do not get offended. Maybe somebody didn't treat you well. Is a leader in holiness movement. A unit leader. A chapter leader. A coordinator. Didn't treat you well. Is that no. 
I will drop. Oh, he may even be the international director. Not the creator of your life. Not the savior of your life. <laughs> even if Jesus is the one that kicks you away. What say the scripture? Though you slay me, yet will I trust in you. Though he slays me, that's God himself. I will still fall back to him. So don't remove yourself from this great ministry. This promising ministry. This heaven worthy ministry. Ministry that has sent many people to heaven. This commendable ministry. Divinely approved ministry. Because somebody oppressed, oppressed you. Somebody offended you. Somebody doesn't like you. Have you withdrawn from food because somebody doesn't like you? Have you stopped eating food because your husband is angry with you, doesn't like you? You didn't eat food again. He said, or oh, whether he likes you or not, you're eating. You break bone. You eat and, and feel happy and drink water and sweat. Whether your husband likes you or not. Then what is the problem that hey, this person doesn't like me and the way they are treating me now and the way and you want to withdraw from all of this movement? Even if we excommunicate you, seek to come back. Now, I want to be practical about this. I want to be practical. Because I think last week somebody in Sierra Leone misbehaved badly that we excommunicated him from holiness revival movement. And that moment we excommunicated him, that very moment, that day, he sent me this text message I'm reading to you now. He said, Daddy, I am deeply sorry. Daddy, if I am driven out of Horemo, where else will I go? When I don't have a church, even when I was excommunicated the other time because the coordinator there had excommunicated him, I was an, I, I was and I'm still I, I, and I am up till now connecting to the international Bible studies through through Facebook. Sir, I am finished. If you drive me out, hey, please sir. Temper judgment with mercy. I am sorry. Right now, I am confused, not knowing what to do. Where will I go? Where will I start from? Sir, please, have mercy on me. Please, sir, I am begging you. That word pierced into my heart. That word drew mercy from my heart. That this word convinced me that this young man really, really knew God, but sin took him away. And he has waken up to himself. That day, I sent him this message. I will bring you back after you have spent quality time with God for a change of character. I said if I don't send him that day. Because I look at these words. They are coming from a man. That will start or will hurt himself. They are not casual words. Formed just to fulfill righteousness. No. So I told myself. Answer him. Answer him. I said. I will bring you back. After you have spent quality time with God. For a change of character. And see the answer he gave me. Okay, sir. Thanks so much for your fatherly love. I'm telling you. Give me the comment. It's communicate to you. Don't laugh. Don't think it's a job. Because God is inside it. He's inside it. 
You see man, but God is the one doing it. We will not do a thing without God telling us. This thing agreed with what happened between Ahab, Elijah, and God. Elijah decreed unto Ahab, the Lord will kill you. The Lord will kill all your male children. The Lord will wipe away your generation. Ahab got broken and was walking gently, slowly, in pain. And the Lord said, Elijah, can you see Ahab? is broken now. Quickly go and tell him, although my word has said it, it shall not be in his day. I honor humility. I honor real brokenness. I honor people that are of a contrite spirit. I see it. I see it. It's a real one. Go and tell him. So my brother, don't say somebody offended you. You are living. It means you are you were not original. Yes. That is it. Do not fight against the church rules of wisdom given for the success of God's work. We are looking for how the work will succeed. We are also looking for how to keep the church pure. And so the Lord can guide us in wisdom. Do it like this. Do it like this. And when such instruction comes to you, you say, ah, look at them now. Don't, where are you defining your life? Where are you proving to God that you are not original? Why are you murmuring? Every nation, submit your financial report directly to the headquarters in Nigeria. What is too difficult for you? Be it women ministry, or the whole ministry submit your pay your percentage directly then what is too difficult why murmuring why is it painful you don't want God to, to bring light into his cause to correct what he sees wrong is it the work of man don't do that don't Yes. That is what you should know. And to you members, learn from the fall of angels with Lucifer. They lifted, they removed their eyes from God and looked to man, so they fell. And are, are demons today. Your eyes should remain on God. I've told your leaders, don't make them look to you. Let them look to God. Paul said that their faith should not be on man's wisdom, but on God. So let your faith be on God. The person you are following is Christ. We must emphasize it. Know it. And don't remove your heart, your allegiance from God to man. Don't. However intelligent, however much you love the man, don't remove, or however much the man loves you, or the woman loves you, God is love himself. But no man is love. God loves you more. Stay with God. Again, let your faith be in God and not on man, as I've said. Number three, do not get offended with holy more. And withdraw because of man. Say the same thing. Be not offended. And withdraw because man has offended you. And to leaders, be not lords over the, the flock of God. Let not the people fear you more than God. I was preaching to a Muslim. I said, do you know the problem of Muslims? They are saying... We are serving the same God with Christians. We honor our God. We respect and reverence God. But you, if anybody abuses God, it doesn't mean anything to you. But if a person says anything against Muhammad, hey, that is how the person must die. He has done a bad thing. He has died because he spoke against Muhammad. Muhammad and God, who is greater? 
Why is it that if they abuse God, it doesn't mean anything? It is until they abuse Muhammad to show you that that's a demon. There's no truth in that. That religion is not for God. It's for Muhammad and Satan. It's not for God. So the same thing. Same thing. Let the people honor God above you. But God has said they should honor you in leadership. Leave it. If they make choice to do that, it's between them and their God. Don't force them. If they refuse to do that, it's between them and their God and your God. But God will make people honor you. I receive not glory from man. I receive not honor from man. There is one that seeketh my honor, even the Father. He will give it to me. Thank you very much, my brethren. The Lord has visited you today to your holiness. To wake you up. To bring back the spirit of Christianity. I will be coming. Both physically and in Zoom, I will be available for you. I'm going to dedicate the beautiful garden, garden of that you have gotten in it. I will be coming there. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, but let your lives be beautified. Let your life be fine. Let brotherly love continue. And remember to honor your leaders. Remember to respect your leaders. For that is required for you to be led by them spiritually. That is required for God to do you good. Let not God see your heart hating your leaders. Turning away from your leaders. God bless you. God be with you. Let's go before the Lord and thank Him. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, that worship you came. Worship you for bringing your word. Mm. Mm. Jesus, Jesus, worship the King of Glory. You are Lord of Heaven. I send this word to Europe to recover them. Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is the God. Jesus name. Worship you. A Father God will walk among your people. Walk among your people. Walk among your people. Walk among your people. Walk among your people, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Father, let your spirit walk in the hearts of your children. Let the Holy Ghost cleanse your children. your children. Revive your children. children. Let them serve you in holiness. Let them serve you in holiness. Let the preachers be holy. No shrewdness, no craftiness, no dirty wisdom. Thank you. 
Especially that the Lord will visit you with his power, restoring power, reviving power, renew, re, renewing power. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord will visit you with refreshing power Amen. your life will not be the same again Amen. he will visit you with open doors in your life he will visit you with healing power Amen. success and achievement Amen. growth and progress Just make confession to God and say, God, where I am wrong, forgive me. Where I have fallen, restore me. Pardon me, O Lord. Where I have ate in my life, take away my sin from me. Take away my sin from me. Jesus name we pray lay hand upon yourself lay hand upon yourself and be expecting that today is a, is a special day for you something new something new is going to happen in your life, happen in your life, this very day, something new is going to happen in your life, Jesus of Horemon is sitting by you, something good is going to happen in your life, happen in your life, this very night, something good is going to happen in your life, Jesus of Horemon is standing by you. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus, I am asking that the power of God will move among your children. 
In Jesus name Amen. Wherever there is spiritual weakness Let the Lord Pour down the strength of God And quicken that person In Jesus name Amen. Wherever there is total backsliding Wherever sin is reigning Detron sin today Revive the backslider Amen. In Jesus name Amen. Whoever is hot That finds it difficult to forgive Power of God Strike out that venom Of unforgiveness Remove it from their heart In Jesus mighty name Amen. My father my God All those stubborn spirits That are making the people stubborn that are making the people uninterested in Christ. Oh yeah, bewitchment that has come upon them will break that power. Amen. Bind those spirits in their life. Amen. Break those forces in their life. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. I rebuke the spirit of division. Amen. The spirit of division. Amen. The spirit of suppression. Amen. God all those things that are not allowing the people to unite and do special work for you. Let them vanish from their lives. Amen. Let them vanish from their families. Amen. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Yes Lord Devon. I pray for a renewal. From God most high. Renewal. Renewal of strength. Re-anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Revival of their lives. Refreshing of the Holy Ghost Come upon these people now Come upon these people now Let them quicken and be alive Let them quicken and be righteous In Jesus name we pray Oh Lord I scatter two friends Who are two friends in iniquity Three friends in iniquity That are barbiters and gossipers That are planning evil I break your power. Amen. Disorganize you. Amen. Separate you. Amen. Put an end to evil friendship among you. In Jesus name. Amen. All of the world, Let the spirit of Christ. Come upon this your people. Amen. And let them shine. Amen. Let them shine. Amen. Let the leaders revive in the Lord. Amen. All kinds of fear. All kinds of suspicion die among them, Amen. disappear among them Amen. in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, do a new thing, do a new thing, Amen. a new thing in the life. Let there be testimonies, Amen. let us hear them, let them speak them. Amen. Lord, divine, any material need, any physical need, Amen. any health challenge, miracles should start, miracles should fall, miracles should move. Move among them in miracles. Amen. Move among them in your blessing. Amen. Move among them in your power. Amen. Disconnect them from the devil. Amen. All evil dreams disappear from among them. Amen. Disappear from their lives. I rebuke you from their families. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, give them overcoming power. Let them not be afraid of man. Amen. Let them not be afraid of the woman. Let the evil man, the evil woman lost his power over them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Worship. Move among them. Move in various countries. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I never knew that he will honor me this way today. I never knew. I never knew. You are this way. You are this way. Oh yes, my Lord. I never knew it. Hallelujah, worship. I never knew. Oh yes, if I know me this way. You have honored me this way. I say thank you. Oh, yes, my God. I never knew you. You honor me this 
Thank you, Jesus. Believe and receive it. Go with it. Hey. Rejoice. Your yoke are broken. In Jesus' name. Your yoke are broken. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. I never knew that you will do it this way today. I never knew. Oh yes, you will do it this way. You have done it this way. I say thank you, Lord. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3906. O zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail dot com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in You. You are my.
you purchased me with your blood you are my lord and my savior you left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin I believe. I believe.